Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last several lectures of EC 2026 Introduction to Signal Processing, we've looked at signals that are sinusoids or sums of sinusoids of different frequencies, but those sinusoids had the same frequency for all time. This is the first of a series of lectures where we'll look at signals where the sinusoids change frequencies over time. Here is standard Western music notation, which illustrates how frequencies change over time. The time is indicated on the horizontal axis, and the frequency is indicated on the vertical axis. Now, there's an exponential relationship between perceived pitch and frequency in hertz, so you can think about this vertical axis as being something on a logarithmic scale. Let's listen to a sinusoid where the pitch changes every 200 milliseconds to the frequencies corresponding to a C major scale. You notice that there's a click between the notes. That results from the fact that there is no particular attempt to get the waveforms to match up at the transitions. So when you're switching from one sinusoidal frequency to another, there may be little jumps in the waveform. Now, we were able to make an ideal time frequency diagram like this because we created the sound ourselves in MATLAB, so we know what to plot. What if you are just given a chunk of time series data and you want to create a plot like this without knowing anything else about it? For that, we can run the spectrogram command in MATLAB. Unfortunately, this is part of the signal processing toolbox. If you have the base MATLAB but not the signal processing toolbox, we want to make sure you're covered. So we have these routines plot spec and spec -ger, I guess however you want to pronounce it, that are part of our SP First toolbox that you can download from the DSP First website. As usual, I'll leave a link to the website below. Now, if you're using the free software Octave, you can install the free signal package. In the second lecture, I introduced the idea of the fast Fourier transform, which tells you how to represent a signal as a sum of sinusoids. Essentially, the spectrogram tool takes your signal in the time domain and splits it up into a bunch of short time segments, and then computes the fast Fourier transform for each of those segments to make a two-dimensional plot. Something like this. There's a lot of details associated with that that we'll talk about later in the course. Let's listen to that scale again. You'll notice that it doesn't perfectly indicate exactly what the frequency is. It's blurred a little bit in this vertical frequency dimension. There's a trade-off between resolution and time and resolution and frequency that depends on the size of these time segments. There will also be variations in appearance depending on how you set these window segments to overlap. Again, we'll talk about those details later. If I want to have more resolution and frequency, I lose resolution and time. At one extreme, I don't have any time resolution at all, and my spectrogram just collapses to a single FFT. You'll also notice these weird artifacts at the transitions. This comes from the fact that within this particular time window, in order to try to represent not only that sudden change of frequency, but the fact that there's probably a jump in the waveform from one frequency to the next, that requires a whole bunch of sinusoids at different frequencies that all need to conspire to create that waveform. There are some example spectrograms on the DSP First website. Let's check out the real sounds. Okay, so we've already heard that C scale. Here's that for Elise piano sample I've used before. It's fairly difficult to pick out the individual notes because each piano note has a series of harmonics on top of it, so distinguishing between the fundamental of one note and the harmonics of another note can be tricky. You can also see these artifacts in the transitions between notes. Let's see. Here's my colleague Jim McClellan saying bat. You've heard that before. Bat. I always thought it's interesting that speech samples like this look a lot like fingerprints. Ah, here's a train whistle. Notice that the overtones of a train whistle are distinctly 
not a nice harmonic series. A train whistle is specifically designed to be annoying. Finally, let's go to this page of simple sounds and scroll down to this example of white noise. So it's noisy in the time domain, and the spectrogram is also noisy. So white noise is random. If we run the MATLAB script that generated it again, we'll get a different sequence of random numbers, and this exact plot would look different. But the general statistical structure of it would be the same. We have a class called EC4260, Random Signals and Applications, that digs into the kind of material needed to talk about random signals like white noise. We don't really have the necessary machinery in EC2026.